want to take a minute to go over to Bloomberg Surveillance, where Tom Keen and Ken Pruitt are talking to Paul Ingrassia. He's the author of the book Crash Course, knows a whole lot about the auto industry. That's a scene. We welcome uh, Bloomberg Television, Betty Lou, and all of you uh, with Paul Ingrassia. His book is Crash Course. Paul, what should be the response of Toyota based on your decades' view of automobiles? Well, I think what Toyota has to do is, is really, uh, first of all, just be very aggressive about getting these repairs made, which is what, what they have begun to do. And then in Washington, they're going to have to, um, you know, basically convince regulators and Congress that they moved on this issue uh, as, as quickly as, uh, as possible. There's uh, already some noises now in Washington, uh, you know, that, hey, that Toyota dragged its feet. And frankly, it's hard to tell, you know, how much of that is bureaucratic backside covering by by the transportation department, and how much of that is real? To be honest, I just I just don't know. Well, Paul, we have a story this morning that it took uh, Audi 15 years to get its U.S. sales back after that sudden acceleration situation with yep. Audi, which was never really pinned on anything specifically, was it? It just sort well, of Ken, it died out. Be, it turned out to be bogus. I mean, it was a low point in the media, you know, and 60 Minutes had it all over and all that sort of thing. It was bogus. There was it wasn't pinned on anything because there was nothing. But in this it, case. There is with Toyota. Yeah, exactly. This, this this definitely seems to be uh, you know a, a different because there's a, there's an identifiable mechanical cause, and now there's of course all these um, you know uh, there's discussion of maybe there's an electronic issue with the Prius and the hybrids and all that, and a brake problem with the Prius. Exactly, and that and, and the brake problem, the electronic brake problem. So I think the issue, frankly, here is just separating fact from from rumor in a in a fast developing story uh, is going to be difficult. And look at it all this way, also this way, you know, to the extent Uncle Sam, you know, the regulators crack down on Toyota, which might be the right thing to do, you know, how much of that sort of looks askance because the government's the major owner of one of Toyota's well, biggest competitors? That's where I wanted to go. I mean, if you if you put the optics on any other car company right now, wouldn't you find a brake problem pretty much at any manufacturer, or is this really unique to Toyota? Well, this seems to be more widespread at, uh, at, at Toyota, uh, uh, Tom. Um, I think uh, the, this acceleration issue and the you know and, and that sort of thing that there does seem to be a real uh, a, mm. a, a problem here. But you know it, the question is then you know how much of the Washington uh, reaction to this is going to be you know the, the transportation department covering its tail for not not pushing this issue earlier? How much of it is going to be um, you know protectionist sentiment in Congress uh, that you know for, from congressmen like uh, John Dingle and Henry Waxman? Who, right. Are upset that you know that Toyota's closing its UA, that one UAW factory out in California. Uh, so uh, it's going to be hard to sort of separate well, let's, uh, reality from uh, from fiction here. Let's continue this discussion, Betty Lou. Thanks so much for stopping by.